Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a deluxe breakfast burrito that has a few unconventional twists that take it to the next level. To get started, I'll need one bag of frozen tater tots. This is not a joke. In my opinion, breakfast burritos need crispy potatoes inside and tater tots are the best way to get that done. Unlike roasted potatoes or home fries, tots stay crispy pretty much no matter what. Now I'll empty this bag onto a sheet tray and then load it into a 450F oven to bake for 45 minutes. The bag says to bake these at 425 for 20 minutes. And in my experience, that's a recipe for soft tots. Now, while those roast, I'm gonna make a quick, bright tomatillo salsa. For that, into a small saucepan, I'll combine 100 grams of jalapeno, 10 grams of garlic, 100 grams of chopped white onion, and then 400 grams of ripe tomatillos. If the fruit doesn't have a little give to it like this, then it's underripe and will be too sour to make this salsa. Lastly, in goes 400 grams of water than a lid. Next, I'll move this pot over to the stove and bring it up to a hard boil. And once it is, I'll turn the heat down to medium low and simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the tomatillos are fully softened and the sauce has thickened up like this. You know it's thick enough to puree when the tomatillos are soft and jammy and the onions are translucent. Next, I'll add in a large grip of fresh cilantro, 10 grams or so, then a strong pinch of salt, and then the immersion blender goes in and I'll puree this until the cilantro is incorporated and there's no longer large chunks of veg floating around. And from here, I'll move this salsa over to a glass container and then throw it into the fridge to cool until it's time to eat our burritos. You guys, this is my go-to salsa when I decide to make my own. It's bright, tart, a touch spicy, and takes me less time to make than going to the store to buy a less good version. Next, it wouldn't be a breakfast burrito without a generous dose of crispy bacon. So to prep that, I'll take one pound of thick cut bacon and cut it into pieces that are roughly a half inch thick. When I say thick cut, I mean about 10 to 12 slices per pound. Any thinner than that, the bacon gets dry and kind of bacon bitty when you render it. I don't love that. Next, the cut bacon gets scooped into a large nonstick pan, and then I'll throw it on the stove and add in about a cup of water. From here, I'll bring it up to a simmer and mention that adding water here is something that we do in the restaurant to both speed up the rendering process and to render the bacon more evenly. I'll simmer this for five minutes or so, and once the water is evaporated, I'll continue to render the fat and crisp up the bacon for about 10 to 15 more minutes. And I'll stir every minute or so to make sure the bacon is in contact with the rendering fat. That's actually what crisps it up, not the pan. And once the bacon is fully rendered, meaning not flabby looking and has a deep golden reddish color like this, I'll move the pan off the heat and then use a slotted spoon to move it over to a paper towel to drain off the fat. Now, it's been about 45 minutes since I threw my tots in the oven, so I'll pull them out. And as you can see, they're quite crispy looking. Since these are destined for a burrito, they're actually a little bit more baked than I would normally like, but the crispiness is the priority here and we need the extra time to dry out the outer edges. If you were willing to sacrifice a little bit of crunch here, you could combine two russet potatoes that are diced in a medium bowl with a long squeezer of olive oil and a strong pinch of salt, toss them together and throw them onto a preheated sheet tray and then high roast them at 450F for about 25 minutes. The results here aren't nearly as crispy as the tots, but these are easy enough to make and they taste good. So keep this move in mind. From here, we have a few more things to prep, but all of them only take about one to two minutes each. First up is refried beans. So to prep those, and I use the term prep very lightly here, into a small saucepan, I'll combine one can of drained pinto beans and one can of store-bought refried beans. I'm not cooking my own beans here because I don't want this burrito to take me all day. And this is only one component of like eight in the final dish. So we really don't need anything fancy here. Canned refried beans taste good and I'm just doctoring them up a little bit. So to level these up, I'll add a strong pinch of salt, a strong pinch of black pepper, two to three grams of ground cumin, and then the juice of half of a lime. From here, I'll move this pot over to the stove, stir everything to combine and get them hot. I'll mention I combined the whole beans with the mashed refried so that I could get a little bit more bean texture. All refrieds in the burrito would add up to too much soft. Next, we need to mix up some eggs for this burrito. So for that, I'll combine 10 large eggs, three grams of salt. And then because I'm a bad boy who likes it creamy, I'll add in 125 grams of heavy cream. This will make the scramble richer, more tender, and less weepy once cooked. Next, the immersion blender goes in and I'll spin everything until it's homogenous. Oh, and I'm prepping enough of everything for four large breakfast burritos, by the way. Next, we'll make a little spicy crema to loop things up and to bring some acidity. For that, I'll combine 125 grams of mayo, the juice of half of a lime, 15 grams of hot sauce, 50 grams of sour cream, one canned chipotle chili in adobo sauce, then one large garlic clove that I'll squish with my garlic press. One more time, I'll drop in my immersion blender and spin this until everything is broken down and we've got a smooth, creamy sauce. And there we go, a spicy, smoky crema, or as I like to call it, chipotle ranch. This is a perfect sauce for a burrito, a fried onion ring, or a quesadilla. Now, let's build these burritos. 
But first, let me quickly thank Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service where you choose a new fragrance to try every month for only 17 bucks. It's flexible so that you can skip any month without penalty, or you can also upgrade to get two or three products each month. The first real cologne that I ever bought was CK1, like 20 years ago at the mall. And I'm pretty sure it's still half full in my dresser drawer somewhere, just rolling around. I like Scentbird because it sends you smaller 30 day supplies of each fragrance. So that way you don't have to commit to a full bottle and smelling the same for a lifetime. Or if you just like trying different scents and smells, this is also a great way to do it. This month, they sent me Two's Man Chill. That one has an outdoorsy scent with lime, cardamom, and black pepper notes. Dime number one, that one smells like a clean mix of sandalwood and bergamot. And then finally, Winter Oak by Raw Spirit. This one has a nice cozy woodsy scent that's a mix of aged oak, suede, and saffron. So to try some new smells, click the link below or scan this QR code and use my code BRIAN2 for 55% off your first month at Scentbird. It's only about eight bucks for your first month. Thank you, Scentbird. To build these burritos, I'll drop two nonstick pans on the stove over medium heat. The large one's gonna be for frying the tortilla until it's crispy, and the small one is for the eggs. Speaking of tortilla, for a hungry person, I recommend going with a 10-incher. It's really hard to fit everything that we want inside into an eight-inch tortilla. I opted not to make my own tortilla here because after trying it a few times, it seemed very not worth it. For something like a quesadilla where it's only about melty cheese and tortilla, I think the extra effort there really does pay dividends. But for a perfect breakfast burrito, all we need is something that's strong enough to hold the toppings and malleable enough to stretch when we roll it. To prep this tortilla for its fillings, I'll spray both sides with a little bit of water to create some steam and then throw it into my medium heat pan. I'll flip it over and steam it on the second side until it's heated through and floppy like this. Then in my other pan, I'll squeeze in a little olive oil, then add in four ounces of my egg puree. To make really nice creamy scrambled eggs with a tender large curd, I'll stir pretty constantly for the first 45 seconds. I want to cook these until I've got about a 50-50 blend of curds to raw eggs in the pan. And from there, I'll fold it every 15 to 20 seconds or so, making sure not to break down the curds too much. I think a crumbly scramble with a smaller curd tends to feel kind of grainy in the mouth. So I try and keep things large and fluffy like this. And after about two minutes, I've got some really beautiful scrambled eggs here. They're silky and soft, but will stand up in our burrito. Now, to build this burrito, I'll slather on three to four tablespoons of my doctored up refried beans and then spread into a nice flat little rectangle. Then next, I'll add on some cheese. That's a third cup or about 30 to 40 grams of grated Oaxaca style cheese. If you haven't used it before, Oaxaca cheese is sharp and dry like a Swiss cheese, but it's fresher and not nearly as funky. A great sub for Oaxaca cheese would be Chihuahua melting cheese, or if you're really in a pinch, I'd say go for pepper jack. Next, I'll lay down eight tater tots, specifically lined up in two rows of four. This will hopefully lead to a very satisfying looking cross section later on. And then next, I'll drop down my little scramble patty here in the middle and try and keep it on top of the tots as best I can. Behind the eggs comes some very lightly mashed avocado. To make it, I just combined two avocados with a strong pinch of salt and a long squeezer of lime. I'm not really calling it guac because this is much less wet and has a lot more texture. For an herbal note here, I'll add on some chopped cilantro, then a quarter of the bacon that I rendered earlier. Ooh, egg down. I'll tuck that back in for structural integrity. Lastly, I'll add a few spoonfuls of my smoky Chipotle ranch, and then I'll top the whole thing with a generous grip of cotija cheese. Cotija is like Mexican Parmesan. Look, it even says so right on the container, but I think Cotilla has more of a sharpness to it and it's not as complicated tasting as Parmesan. Lastly, it's time to roll this thing up. And I'll admit that I have not rolled a ton of burritos in my life, like maybe less than 20 in total. So if I can do this, you certainly can. It starts with tucking in the sides to cradle the fillings. Then while keeping the insides as contained as you possibly can, I'll roll this front to back until the tortilla is folded over. As I roll this, I'm gonna tuck in the sides so that they don't fly open when we're eating it and then they get wrapped into the burrito itself. And from there, it's just a tight roll until everything is packed up. Now to finish, I'll drizzle a little oil into my nonstick pan and then add my rolled burrito seam side down. From there, I'll fry this to both get it super crispy on the outside and to help seal the burrito shut. And after about 90 seconds here, I'll check the bottom and it's looking golden and crispy. So I'll flip it over and fry it on the backside for another hot 90. You certainly could avoid this last step of frying, but I would never do that. Adding one more type of texture is almost never gonna be a bad thing in general. And when you finally get a taste of that sweet, brown, crispy tortilla along with everything else, you're never gonna not do it again. And right about now, if you're wondering, hey, Bri, this seems like a lot of trouble for a silly little breakfast burrito. Is it worth it? Well, 
You tell me, bro. I was so, so stoked that I got a cross section that looked this good. It's beautiful, dude. Look, egg, tater tot. Yes, 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 yes. Add on some fruity, tart tomatillo salsa to bring a little sparkle to an otherwise very rich, very creamy burrito. And yeah, you're having a good time. This thing has everything. It's smoky, crispy, creamy, smooth, chewy. And it's one of the funnest foods on earth to eat and honestly, it's not even that heavy. I highly recommend that you make this for someone that you like sometime soon because you're not gonna be disappointed. Let's eat this thing! If you like melty, crispy, semi-Mexican foods, then check out my video for quesadilla right here.